it is dark outside. It is very, very dark. Why is it very dark outside? Because it is half past stupid o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I'm here in an airport. I'm here in the Bozeman Airport, otherwise known as Bose Angeles by the locals. And I am stranded, stranded here because my flight was just canceled. Um, and so I've come over here to an empty, um, an empty gate. And myself and many other people are very agitated that now we're gonna have to wait here six hours until our flight's ready to go. But I'm okay with that because believe it or not, I just won some kind of lottery. I just won a lottery of universe chances in my favor, hilarious stories and I couldn't help but share. So I've been in here in Montana for the last two or so weeks. I was invited out here on a retreat it was a wonderful retreat hosted by my good friend, Jim Kreider. Shout out to Jim. Thank you, Jim. You're awesome. Uh, with lots of Bitcoiners. There were 38, 40 Bitcoiners here or so at this retreat. Um, it was a wonderful time. Lots of Bitcoiners you would know, including Michael Schmidt, uh, Preston Pish, Sam Callahan, um, James Lavish, lots of other people uh, you would know, uh, and lots of other people you wouldn't know or you wouldn't know yet, right? A lot of other Bitcoiners that are really high quality folks doing startups, th you know, other Bitcoin companies, um, awesome things going on from both the people you know, like Preston, James, Sam, myself, and of course, lots of awesome things from folks that are a little more private online. It was a wonderful retreat, wonderful time. It was a few days, uh, but then the last week, week and a half or so, I've been spending in Montana. I've been helping clients um, in person set up their multi-sig vaults. I set up, I don't know, maybe five or six different um, vaults in my time here. Uh, we got lots of coins off of Exchange. We got coins off Coinbase. We got coins off of iTrust, Capital, Fortress Trust, Swan. We got coins off of lots of exchanges. Uh, we got coins out of ETFs. We got coins out of lots of different avenues. We upgraded people from single sig, multi sig. It was a great time. Lots of people upgrading their self custody. Really happy and proud with that. So awesome time. I also got to see some of the beautiful wonders of Montana, Glacier Park, and a lot of the countryside and a lot of the fun things, which I probably shouldn't say on camera, uh, that we did. That was awesome. Uh, so it was a wonderful trip, wonderful time, but now it's time to go home. Now it's time to leave, which is why I'm up at stupid o'clock in the airport now here waiting six hours for my flight because it was canceled at the last minute. Thank you, United. I don't know why I still fly with you guys, but <laughs> anyway, where is the lottery? Where is the funny thing in all this? The funny thing in all this is that when I arrived here a couple weeks ago, a friend of mine, uh, from my hometown I happened to run into here, which was a kind of freak coincidence in the middle of, you know, Montana, which is a tiny population, to run into somebody that I know at baggage claim. But then the even more funny thing to me was now leaving today, just, you know, half an hour, hour ago or so, um, I'm waiting in line. And for context, my debit card was flagged a few days ago. Great. Somebody, you know, was doing fraudulent charges on my card and, um, you know, they, um, you know, they had fraudulent charges on it. And so, of course, my bank shut off my card, which is fun to do while you're traveling and only live on cash. But it's okay. I made it to the airport gate and baggage claim. I had my bag to check in. And, of course, they could only take cash. Uh, they wouldn't take card. Um, they wouldn't take card. And, um, oh, there's the guy I'm talking about right now walking by me. Anyway, I'll get to him in just a minute. But... So I get to the gate, my card, I don't have a card, I only have cash, and for some brilliant reason, they can't take cash. So if you're ever going to fly, take note that they can't take cash at the gate when they're going to do your baggage claim. I guess it's obvious in hindsight, but it wasn't obvious to me in the moment. I had plenty of cash on me, I thought, okay, I'll just give it to them and it'll be fine. No, they said go to the gift shop, because at the gift shop you can exchange that cash for a temporary, you know, gift card, debit card, whatever. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I get out of line, go to the gift shop get there and the lady's like oh no sorry we're out of gift cards this never happens i can't believe it we sold the last one yesterday oh my boss comes in, in a couple hours i'm like great because at the time my flight was not canceled yet and i thought i'm gonna miss my flight now or have to have this bag stranded here whatever great so i i go back to the gate I exp or the baggage check i explain it and i have this problem i only have cash they don't have any temporary cards what can you do do you have a card on file no we don't have a card on file great of course you don't even though i paid for this uh, flight with a card, but you know, of course, the card I paid with, for the card I used to pay for the flight, of course, that card no longer exists, right? It's been shut off. So, anyway, long story short, he says, you know, you gotta ask another customer if they're willing to pay, if they're willing to cover you with the debit card, you can give them cash back. I'm like, okay, sure, that makes sense. So, I turn to the guy next to me in line at the baggage check. I turn around, I say, hey, you don't know me, but can I 
use your card, pay for my bag, I've got a $50 bill on me, I'll just give you the 50 bucks that covers the bag and then some, just help me out, get my bag home, whatever, right? And the guy says, actually, I do know you, you're that Bitcoin guy. <laughs> so here in the middle of Montana, with a population of 1 million people, I happen to run into a guy in the airport next to me at baggage claim that recognized me when I turned around and looked at him and asked for help. And he recognized me and he's like, yeah, hey, you do the Bitcoin custody stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah, you do know me somehow, I guess. So anyway, that is the kind of lottery I won, right? Which is very funny to me because on this little YouTube channel here, there's maybe 12,000, 11, 12,000 subscribers or so right now. On Twitter, I've got 30,000 or so. A lot of those are probably bots or duplicates. So I think maximum, there are probably 30,000 people or so that know I exist in Bitcoin world, right? Obviously a few people know about me that don't subscribe or follow me. And of course, like I said, a lot of people that follow me on Twitter also subscribe on YouTube, vice versa. And a lot of those are bots too. There's a lot of bots on here. So point is maximum 30,000 people know of the work I do in Bitcoin and would recognize me in the way that this guy recognized me. And my analytics show that roughly 60% of those 30,000 people are in the United States of America. So that means across this entire nation of 330 million people, there's maybe one in 18,000 that knows that I exist, right? And ironically enough, that's about the square root of 330 million, 18,000. It's a little more than that, but you know, roughly one in 18,000 people, which is about 60% of 30,000, which is also 18,000 know that I exist. And so a one in 18,000 shot, the guy standing next to me at baggage check would know who I am. And yet I ran into him. He's the first person ever in my life that's recognized me in the general public that was not, you know, it was just a random person that recognized me. And yet, um, you know, so anyway, that's the funny story um, that, you know, he won the lottery because he ran into me that he knows me and I ran into him that he follows me. So it's a very, very funny coincidence anyway. Thank you, you know who you are who helped me. Uh, he gave me the cash, got my bag through, made it to the airport just fine. Of course, like I already described, I make it here and then I find out that about half an hour ago, my flight was canceled for some stupid reason. The weather is just fine. Anyway, the funny thing with all this is that this guy was talking about how, yeah, I've got stuff on Coinbase and exchanges and he get off exchanges, dang, I wish I, um, you know, I, I wish I would have known that you were here in Montana and we would have got it done. And I kind of shrugged my shoulders and, Anyway, the point in all that is just to say, you know, then I get some bit of a motivator is that there's a lot of people out there that need this done, that need this Bitcoin help done, right? There's, again, let's say 30,000 people or so that follow me, right? Maybe they don't know my name. Maybe others watch every single video I have, you know, whatever, from hardcore core early fans to just people way out on the sidelines, 20 to 30,000 people or so, right? Which I'm very grateful for every single one of them, right? Every single one of you. Um, but the funny thing I think about is what happens when 1% of those people decide they want to upgrade their self-custody security? What happens when one out of 100 of those people decide, you know, I no longer went only single sting stuff. I don't, I no longer went only my ledger device, only my cold card, only everything in a single point of failure where I and the device and the seed phrase that the device has created, I'm stewarding. I don't want those single points of failure anymore. I do want to have jurisdictional arbitrage with keys to multiple countries. I do want to make sure that if something happens to me, my wife, my kids, my family, my business, whomever is okay, right? A lot of people are going to want that. I do believe at least 1% of people are going to want that, okay? Maybe you don't want it, okay? But if 99 of you don't want it, somebody else does, right? So this is the consideration I have as a result of this conversation I had with this, with this gentleman for 15 minutes or so that happened to know me is just, a reminder for myself that probably at least 1% of people are going to want this. They're going to want to upgrade to multi-sig, multi-jurisdictional, multi-sig, zero single point of failure, not just less single points of failure, zero single point of failure. 1% are going to want that. 30,000 people, that's 300 people. If I had 300 people reach out to me in the next month, I would not be able to keep up. I just could not keep up, right? The people I was helping here in person in Montana, you know, it would take hours. It would take hours to work with someone, set up the vault, because it's not just, you gotta set up the vault, you gotta transfer things from IRAs, from other accounts, right? If, if people are buying Bitcoin within their Roth IRA, which you can do, you know, that takes time. You know, it's a lot of um, on-chain stuff, right? Actual technical stuff, but then it's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot of waiting, it's a lot of, you know, it's just a lot of management in general. And to have just me with all of that work is just not sustainable, right? And a lot of people would say, well, why don't you get help? I do have help. I have an assistant and there are 40 people at the Bitcoin Advisor on my team. Zachary Waterman, who's 
All right, Zachary, get over here. Anyway, but even I don't think we're gonna keep up. So my point is, what do you think is going to happen in the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, when I go from 30,000 to 40,000, 50,000, maybe even 80,000 or 100,000 people that are watching my content following, and 1% of them, or maybe 2%, or 3%, or 5%, one in 20. What happens when my fan base goes from 20 to 30,000 to 80 to 100,000, and a mere 5%, one in 20 of them, decides they want this? It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be nuts. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be unsustainable for me, right? Even when I hire help, even when I have people come on board, because the amount of time and experience associated with getting this done is cannot scale as fast enough as demand is going to scale, right? And so the funny thing with all this is that it's a little surreal to me that even though the odds were tiny and minuscule, one in eighteen thousand chance that I would be standing next to the right person. And then even then, that we would be in the right place at the right time where they actually would recognize me, where they actually would say something to where I would actually have the need to turn around and ask them for help, right? All of those things. It's easy, a one in 50,000 chance, a one in 80,000, a one in 100,000 chance that I would run into them at that specific time in that specific moment. And that's why I'm not annoyed. I'm not annoyed that my that my debit card was was shut down by my bank. I'm not annoyed that I'm stranded here for the next six hours with just my little bag and my chips to eat, it is annoying. But it's not that annoying because that kind of made my day, right? To run into somebody that knew me, appreciated my work, uh, was a Christian and, you know, I just appreciate who I am and the stuff I've done, right? That made my day and that made up for everything else, right? You know, and that's one of the reasons why I don't really worry about when stuff goes bad anymore, right? Because every, to everything there is a reason and to think that I'm in control or to think that I'm you know, the, the, this is fully self-sovereign over my life and everything happens in my life is just absurd. It's just ridiculous, right? Of course, I didn't plan for my flight to be canceled. Of course, I didn't plan for my debit card to be uh, shut down. Of course, I didn't plan for the baggage check to not take cash for some reason. Of course, I didn't plan for the, the shopping center to conveniently run out of temporary debit cards. Of course, I didn't plan any of those things, but all those things conspired perfectly at the exact same moment that I had the th same 90 second window that I stood in front of the exact precise person I was probably supposed to stand in front of right now. This guy has a few kids, obviously I'm not gonna say his name for OPSEC, but he's got a few kids. He's still got stuff on Coinbase for whatever reason. And hopefully this winning of the lottery for him, and likewise for me, this, this complete fluke chance that we ran into each other, hopefully is gonna be the little bit of push for him to get off the exchanges, take self-custody, upgrade to multi-sig without single points of failure, right? And so all that to say is why worry, right? Just as the Bible describes, right? Why worry? What can I add to your life, right? If, if God will take care of the sparrows in the field, he is of course gonna take care of you. So why worry about those things? Why worry about when things go wrong? You know, because you never know when the person standing right next to you is the exact person you need to be talking to in that moment, right? And take advantage of those moments when you're standing next to someone, in front of someone, behind someone, like they might be the exact precise person you are meant to talk to in that moment, right? So for me, that was a funny thing for this morning. For him, I think it also was very funny. It was very comical that, you know, oh, Bitcoin, we know each other. We can talk Bitcoin for the next 20 minutes while we wait in security check line. And anyway, very funny fluke chance and a reminder for all of you watching, get off exchanges now, take action now because for me, it is surreal to realize this thing is getting big enough that for the first time in my life, I've been recognized in public. And I can just only wonder, what is it going to be two years from now, three years from now, 10 years from now? Please take action now. Service providers are going to have all their time eaten up. And this message is especially important for those of you watching that have between 0 0.5 and 10 Bitcoin, okay? If you have 10 Bitcoin, you probably have more time but especially for those of you with a, a lesser or moderate a number of coins, right? Between half a coin to 10 coins, please take action now, reach out to me now, do these things now, right? Because when demand skyrockets, when the amount of demand increases by a factor of 10 and the amount of service providers like myself only increases by a factor of two or three, what do you think is going to happen? The cost to have those service pr providers serve you is going to skyrocket, okay? Especially for those with half a coin to 10 coins, right? Why? Because those with 10 coins, 30 coins, 50 coins, 100 coins, 300 coins are going to outbid you. They're gonna pay twice as much, three times as much, 10 times as much for the same kind of services that you want. So please feel free to reach out and get self-custody coins within your Roth IRA, within your traditional IRA, inherited IRA, super managed, super fund, trust, revocable trust, irrevocable trust, super, whatever. 
Get your coins within your retirement accounts. Get your coins off of exchanges. Get your coins upgraded from single points of failure and single SIG to multi-SIG if and when possible, right? I don't care what percentage you move over. I don't care if you want to have half in single SIG or half in the ETF for whatever reason and half in a multi-SIG. I don't care what you decide to do, but if that's something you want and you want to have your hand held, okay, you have two options. Either you can do it yourself for free or you can hire somebody to help you. My encouragement is, if you want to do the latter, if you want to have somebody help you, please have it done as soon as possible because I saw it at this retreat I was just at with the 40 Bitcoiners I was mentioning. I, I saw it when I was handholding people in person here in Montana, and I see it even in the short brief conversation I have with this gentleman this morning in the airport is that this is coming, the momentum is coming, and the supply of service providers able to help people is not going to scale nearly as fast as number go up for Bitcoin is going to happen, meaning there's going to be this massive supply squeeze for the service providers. So please take action now. I hope for this gentleman I met this morning, he takes action as a, as a, as a result and a response to this freak one in 50,000, one in 100,000 chance encounter uh, this morning. And they, it's a wake up call for him to get his coins off Coinbase. Um, Cause the, the, the funny thing is that most of you watching this know you gotta do it, right? Like this guy was like, yeah, I gotta get out of Coinbase. The people I was helping, uh, last week in person, you know, this guy had a bunch of coins and he's, he's got it all in Coinbase and Fortress Trust. And he's like, yeah, I know I got to get it out. Just, I hadn't done it yet. Or I hadn't had time. Do it now, okay? You might think you can wait until Bitcoin number goes up by a factor of two, three, five, or 10. But please, I'm begging you, do not wait. Especially if you have less than 10 coins. Between half a coin to 10 coins. Especially those people. Because again, the people with 10 times more coins than you are going to be willing to pay five to 10 times the price of you. And they are going to price you out of the market. Not just for me, because I'm a greedy capitalist, quote unquote. Yeah. But for all of the service providers, right? This is not something I'm saying explicitly for me. I'm saying this for all the service providers, all the product developers, is take action and do these things now because it is going to be a massive squeeze at some point in the future, right? So anyway, that's my fun little morning story. I guess I'm rambling on because I have plenty of time here at stupid o'clock um, just to wait for my flight in six hours. So anyway, I'm going to hang out here. I'm going to get some work done. Um, anyway. Take action now, get your coins off self-custody. And to the gentleman that um, we met in person here, it was awesome meeting you and um, very, very funny fluke chance made my day. So thanks.